Dungeons and Dragons and Daughters. Welcome everyone to a, another episode of Dungeons and Dragons and Daughters. We are a fifth edition actual play D and D podcast. I am Kurt, Daddy the Dungeon Master, and to my left we have Sam, who plays the magical, wonderful Lyrup Syrup of the House of Pancakes. I probably won't say the full name for these, but whatever. And to my left we have Birdie, who plays Willow Carter, half elf rogue. Yes, <laughs> and to my left we have. Um, S- Sammy, I play Pinky Pog, a very, um, p- pretty elf. <laughs> a very pinky pretty elf. What's your class? Oh, my class, I am a, I forgot. Sorcerer. <laughs> sorcerer. 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 I am, sorcerer. oh, I'm a sorcerer, right? I forgot. <laughs> and I am Trent. I play Solitude the Tortle Monk. So, we are playing The Wild Beyond the Witchlight. So, obvious spoiler alert for anyone that uh, hasn't read the adventure. We're playing through it. So, it's, you're going to find out what happens in it. Dang, you're spoiling it for me. You. I haven't even read it <laughs> we're, yet. We're going to continue spoiling it for oh, you. No! All right. So, uh, let's play D&D. Woo! Yeah! A silver statue of a dancing fairy is mounted on the roof of this ticket booth and surrounded by fluttering butterflies. The booth is decorated with an animated depiction of the night sky with shooting stars arcing across it. An elderly goblin perches behind the ticket counter, peering at you quizzically through a spyglass. He lowers the spyglass and calls out to you, Greetings, fair fair goers! (laughs) And you look around, and you see the four of you standing there, outside of this delightful, colorful, bright carnival, right at sunset. Sam, describe your character. What uh, what does everybody see with Lyrup? Oh, right. Okay. So, Lyrup has a almost yellowish tint to her skin right now, because she's happy, right? Mm-hmm. Um... And she's a fairy. Yes. So you, I have a very specific butterfly wing. Um, it's pipe vine swallowtail butterfly wings, which are grayish blue color. And her syrupy hair is kind of in these like, oops, pigtails that kind of curl. Y- you know what I'm saying? Like pigtail and then they curl. Okay. Mm-hmm. And they just they just stay there, just yes. up in the air, defying yeah. gravity. Okay. And they're kind of sticky to the touch. So I mean, don't, don't touch my hair. Does it taste <laughs> like syrup? So if we like licked it or something, would it taste like syrup? You'd probably get a slap, but I mean, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> just wondering. Okay. All right, Bertie. What uh, what do the rest of them see when they when they look at uh, Willow? Okay, so they see a f- about a five foot four half elf. With choppy blonde hair, um, like with a little, a per, I don't know, perky nose. I don't know if that... A perky nose? Per, I don't know how to call <laughs> a it. A pinched nose? You mean like an upturned nose? A button nose? A button nose. A button nose, okay. Yes, there we go. Um, with numerous tattoos on her arms. Ooh. And with, uh, she is often found with a jean jacket, but she will wear anything that suits the occasion. What do you mean by often found? Is she wearing a jean jacket? Oh, she is right now, okay. but it, <laughs> she, yeah, she's wearing a jean jacket. Okay. Oh, I forgot to me- mention that Lyrup is uh, like only three feet tall, so... <laughs> she's very tiny. Yeah. So she's like looking up at all of you. At all the giants that are standing around her right Hi, now. Hi, guys. Sammy. <laughs> What, what does everyone see when they when they look at your character? So what people see is they see about a five nine elf with really light like yellow skin, so close to my skin color, with pink curly hair and with a flower headband. Ooh. And um, like light blue eyes. And it's Pinky is your character's yeah, name. Pinky. Okay. <laughs> Trent. All right. So Tude. 
uh, <laughs> is uh, he's actually pretty small too. He's only about three foot eight. You're so tall. Whoa. <laughs> uh, and he wears a family heirloom wig, which is golden right. blonde in color and is tied back in a little <laughs> pony nub. Um, he pony nub, not a man bun. You know, tomato, tomato. Um, but he uh, he looks, you know, pretty typical for a turtle. So he's kind of a greenish brown, but his shell is covered in like this just amazing, colorful pattern that he has put on there because you know he lost something in the uh, witch light fair the last time he was there, and he's compensated by learning to paint his own shell, which he can't see. So he's very skilled with a uh, like kind of a long haired, a long, uh, I guess haired, yeah, paintbrush that he sort of slings over his back, and he's got just this amazing uh, color pattern right. that he will change Whoa. periodically. He can't write. <laughs> <It's, laughs> oh, Excellent. I was like, what are you talking? Oh. All right. So, so the four of you are standing there and seeing each other. And I'm sorry, did, did we establish? Did some of you have like a shared history did no. together? We? Yeah. Okay, so so you two, um, so so Willow and Pinky, you are standing mm-hmm. there. Um, you're you're friends. You you've been friends for for years. But now you see Tude and Lyrup, who you haven't seen in eight years since the last time that the Witchlight Carnival has had come through um, and stopped outside of Baldur's Gate on the Sword Coast. And they're still very short. Hey! And st- they, they are still very short, <laughs> yes. They have not grown much since the last time that you have seen them. My wings have. Your, your wings have your gotten wings bigger have, in the last eight yeah. years? Sure. sure yeah. yeah! 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 <laughs> yeah! <laughs> So you're standing outside of the ticket booth, and there's people that are buying tickets. They're going into the carnival, and when you look past the, the ticket booth, you can see people walking around inside and laughing, and there's music that's going on, and there's stilt walkers, and there's bubbles and balloons and little shots of magic and lights going on beyond inside the carnival. And again... Beyond the witch light? The car- or the, uh, the goblin that's there at the ticket booth. Hello! Come on! Step up! Step up! Get up! I remember this place. Whoa. And he's looking at you with a spyglass. All right, what do we got here? Okay. All right. Oh. Oh. Does the spyglass, like, dip down for us three feet? (laughs) Is is his eye really big in the spyglass? Yeah, it is really big (laughs) in the spyglass, yes. What color is his eyes? His brown. Uh-huh. It's a goblin. So he's yeah. So he's a little guy. Uh, he's about he's about three and a half feet tall. Green, big, pointed, a little bit of floppy ears that, that are on him. He's got some scruff gray hair and balding, and he's perched on top of a, a tall stool behind behind the counter. He's like, oh, okay, it's you. All right, I got something for you. And he reaches down. He actually disappears from from view as he climbs down off of the stool, and you hear some banging and kind of like. It sounds like there's symbols clashing underneath of it, and there's stuff that a glass breaks, and it's like, oh god, oh, okay, here it is, and he comes out, he pulls out this box. It's like someone left this for you, and uh, he reaches inside and he pulls out tickets. Here, and he hands his <gasps> take, oh! take one and pass them and pass them down. Oh my god, there are tickets. I'm gonna charge this forever. I'm gonna hang this up in my room. Why do we have We're eight rides? Why do we have extra tickets? Uh, ju- just in case. Oh, the just in case. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone is, is handed a Witchlight Carnival ticket that's got uh, uh, punches of butterflies down at the bottom. So, I love butterflies. So depending on the activity or the ride that you want to do inside the Witchlight Carnival, this gives you a certain amount of punches to, to do that sort of thing. <laughs> and he also, oh, I forgot something. And he climbs back down and he hears some more banging and clashing of things and the breaking of something else. He's like, oh, dang it! <laughs> and he climbs back up. And he, in, in his arms, which he precariously climbed back up on the stool, and somehow he managed to balance himself back on top, and he throws them down on the counter, is a set of fairy wings, fake fairy wings that everyone can wear. He's like, oh, this is it's part of the deal. you got to wear the fairy wings while you're inside the carnival. Everybody wears them. Do I have to? Well, d- d- well no, but no. just carry him around so we so everyone can visually tell that you got a ticket. Okay. Now, like, just grab him. 
what color are the wings? What like, color would you like them to be? Like, can we pick our own and they, they'll they have col- colors? Sure. Oh. And when you, when you look past the, the, the goblin, well, you tell the goblin actually has fairy wings on him, too. <gasps> yeah, but fake just looks like it's part of the uniform. And when you look past him inside the carnival, everyone is wearing these fake fairy wings. <laughs> Two steps up and, and grabs a pair and says, these are precarious. And kind of manages to sling it around his neck. What? <laughs> these wings are precarious. He holds up a, an ear horn. What? <laughs> uh... Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, off you go. Have okay. fun. <laughs> okay. Willow puts her wings on her back, just I don't know, like a backpack almost. Like, okay, what what the heck is this? You know? Oh. Okay. Draw them I don't think Tudes fit very well. They're kind of just around his neck. <laughs> <laughs> so and. and I'm you do see some people that, that as you sort of, oh, 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 I'm sorry, one more thing. And he reaches inside the box. I forgot to give this to you. Oh, you're so forgetful. Uh, just so we have reference there. Oh. Ooh, la la. A map. A map. Oh, oh. Ooh, the mystery oh my mine. God. And the big oh top. God, so cool. Holy moly. Oh my gosh. Oop, your Dang, I got move stuff. Whoa. Oh, so here's the ticket. Baby. Okay. Oh my God, bubble pop teapot. There's a witch light monarch? We should go. Ah! We should go on the carousel. Lost property. That's where I belong. Yeah. Leave me thing on there. Dragonfly. Oh my God. Oh my God. There's a pixie kingdom. So the goblin. You should enter snail racing. <laughs> so the goblin reaches into the box and he pulls out this map of the Witchlight Carnival mm-hmm. that shows you all of the different places that that you can go. And on the map, it's it's a pretty defined area of of the carnival and where you can go. Um, on the map, it shows this mist completely around the area, um, showing where the boundaries of the carnival are. Uh, but on top of that, there's also a a river that has magically formed and appeared when the carnival appeared. There there was not a river in this area before, but the river completely surrounds the the carnival, so making it very difficult to get in and out of the carnival unless you're going through the main entrance where the ticket booth is. So if you can see, like right in the middle there on the map where it says ticket booth, that is where you're entering in. How oh did my we, gosh, this is so cool. How did, how did we get through? Oh, wait, there's a bridge. Okay, there yep. we go. Oh, my gosh. So, and as a reminder for everyone. Yes. The last time you were here, you lost something that was very valuable to you. <laughs> and so just just wanted to, to recap that real quick. So, Trent, or Tude, you lost your handwriting. You could still write things down. You could still read it, but it is illegible to anyone else that's trying to read your handwriting. Pinky, you lost your ability to smile. That is what you had lost. And and and, and also just as a reminder, it's and you had lost these things after being in the carnival, which is some hazy memories. But you had been kicked out of the carnival last time you were here because you had all snuck into the carnival without actually buying a ticket. Oopsies. And that's where you had met Mr. Light and Mr. Mr. Witch, the owners and the, the managers of the Witchlight Carnival. Carter, or Willow, you lost your brother. Mm-hmm. So you, you lost an entire person. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Oops. And then uh, Lyrup, you lost your sense of direction. That's why I can't go home. That's why you can't find your way back to the Feywild. You can't find your way back home. And you also have a very, very difficult time telling your left from your right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Up, down, left, sideways. <laughs> it's just very difficult. It's just for you. words. Yes. No meaning. So now, eight years later, you're back at the magical witch like carnival, but you have tickets this time. So you're able to go in and explore and do what it is that, that you want, but you have this over arcing goal of finding the things that you lost the last time that you were here do we know how we got the tickets like do we buy them or Uh, that's the thing is that this goblin recognized you as you came up and he had this sort of care package available for you that had the wings that had the tickets that had the map in it that you've never seen this goblin before oh wait before we like leave the goblin can i ask what their name is what's your name what what's your name (laughs) 
puts the ear horn up. Nicholas! That's a nice name. I know. <laughs> All right, bye. See ya. Have fun. So, how did we find ourselves here? Did we come here on purpose? Or is it just sort of like we woke up from a dream and we're standing in front of the ticket booth? You'd, you had heard about the Witchlight Carnival appearing outside of Baldur's Gate. And that actually is a little fuzzy as well. It's like you knew that you would want to come back here and try and find the thing that you had lost or gain back the ability to, to, to have handwriting that other people could read. But it was almost like you were magically compelled. Like a little, it was a little bit of a dreamlike state. It's like you remember w- wanting to come here, but the actual steps of how you arrived from your home to the front gates of the Witchlight Carnival, that's a little hazy in how you came to be here. Mm. Okay. So do we enter? Like, are we past the ticket booth? You, you tell me. You're, you're still right at the ticket booth. What's finding a, a, Talking to Nicholas the Goblin. What's a calliope? Calliope. I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I pronounced it last time. What's a calliope? A calliope is a, uh, is essentially a, uh, an organ um, with large pipes on it that, that produces music. And you can oh. actually hear the music that's playing organ, out in the I background. Even, like, <laughs> it's like a heart. It's yeah, a liver. Like, <laughs> it's, yeah. a, it's a giant kidney. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the show I watch. The organ is shaped like a kidney. Yeah, and, yeah, and you can hear the... So unoriginal. Not quite that annoying, but that's just the best impersonation there's, I could there's do. nobody that plays a... It, it's like a self-playing, like a player piano kind of a deal. I, like, rush up to it and, like, study it to see if I know how it's, like, functioning. Oh, okay. Because, you know, I like... All right, so for the rest of you, uh, Lyra goes charging head into (laughs) the carnival. I mean, I don't know her. But then when I, like, you know, jump in the air, I stay in the air for a little bit, and then I go back down. So I'm just... So so on this organ, there's a big crank. And there is actually a monkey with a small hat that's standing (gasps) there, (gasps) slowly turning the crank that's causing the music to come out. Those are scary. Oh. So it's not like magic. It's just it's like that one Toy Story. That yeah, was like, the Toy Story one. Like it's so creepy yeah. looking. <laughs> what is this? Here, hold on a second. Okay. The, there is a description here that I can read to you. Oh. For the calliope. A merry tune spills forth from an instrument on the back of a brightly painted wagon. A monkey wearing a cloak covered with buttons turns a handle at the wagon's rear, sending music into the air from rows of golden whistles. As you watch, a goblin dressed as a ladybug toddles <laughs> up to you, rattling a tin can. Ding, 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 ding. Um. Spare a button, if you please. I'll sew it next to all of these. I offer nothing in its place besides a smile upon my face. Um. Oh, and I'm sorry. This uh, is not the goblin that says this. It's the monkey that says this. <gasps> There's a, oh, it's a talking monkey. <laughs> yes. Oh, my Can gosh. I, I'm going to give the monkey one of my buttons from my shirt. I don't know. We're not supposed to. We... Okay, whatever. I don't have any buttons, Mr. Monkey, but I do have this. And he hands him a very small seashell. I'm still by That'll the ticket do. booth. All right, so what's I'm that? still I'm still by the ticket booth, by the way. Oh, so you have it you have not entered? Okay. No. Um, all right, we're already splitting the party. This is great. Yep. I shrug <laughs> my shoulders and just plop. I like take a button from my coat and I just yank it off. Oh, ow. <laughs> I yank it off and I just Okay. All right, let me... Maybe a stupid idea, but I don't care. I have to make a note of this. Oh. Oh. Uh Uh-oh. All right, so we have (laughs) Lyra, we have Pinky, and we've got Tude. All gave a button equivalent to the monkey. Uh Uh-oh, something's going to happen. So, and... When you drop that into the can, makes a ding noise, and he rattles a, the the goblin rattles around, and then he sort of waddles back to the calliope with the, with the monkey, and he's like, "Hey, thank you, that's great, thank you so much, yay!" And he the music, he it doesn't look like the monkey actually does anything different to the calliope, but suddenly the tune of the music like increases, and it gets it's 
it gets like happier. There's a there's another level of complexity that gets added to it. There's suddenly there's like more instruments that are suddenly playing along with the music. And when you look around, you can see that everyone is now like <gasps> giving you a quick glance every now and again, and everyone seems to be a little bit happier than they were before. Lear starts dancing. Oh boy, what are you doing? Uh, uh Oh wait. Hello? Oh, that was a happiness meter. <laughs> <laughs> so if you notice on, on the map, there is a there is a happiness meter in the, the lower right hand corner. Is that what it's called? Oh, super happy. Well, it, it's essentially. Um, it was on this one, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. And then wait, what's that? Oh, that's probably time. And so this is when, like looking around, you realize your actions have a direct impact on the overall mood of the carnival. What happens if we make it like depressing or angry? Would we get like kicked out? That's uh, only one way to find out, I suppose. This Lear's. calliope is prodigious. <laughs> <laughs> Point of inspiration. <laughs> Lyrip starts like going with the tune and starts dancing and yeah. Willow, you're still at the front. Yeah. I have a question I want to ask You want to ask Nicholas? Sure. Because no one else seemed to ask. Um, Nicholas. What? Nick, Nick, I'm, okay. Uh, how do you know, why do you have stuff put aside for us? He holds up the ear horn. What? Why do we have (laughs) these things? Why'd you give it to us? Oh, uh, uh, Mysterious benefactor left it for you. I don't know their name. What do they look like? I it was just it was just left with a note. Oh, okay. Can can I and see the, that note? Well, it, it magically disappeared. Hmm. Okay. I don't know what to think about this. Okay. <laughs> um. Okay, then I guess I'll just head in. Okay. So you you had and you join the rest of the group at the at the Calliope and you know after some time it's uh, so the the go- another goblin walks up to you with the the can of buttons that everyone else put in and uh, the the monkey that's there says the same rhyme again when he sees you walking up he says spare button if you please I'll sew it next to all of these I offer nothing in its place besides a smile upon my face <coughs> I don't have anything with me right now. So I think I'll pass. But you have and, and, to. You, and we establish Whoa. you have a jean jacket on that very obviously has buttons on it. I don't have. <laughs> I take it off. I don't. Deception. Come on. I don't have anything on me right now. I think I'll have to pass. He's like, That's okay. That's okay. Just enjoy your time here. Thank enjoy you. the music. And instead, the music is still playing in that that elevated happy tune from when they had given the buttons. Hmm. Okay. <gasps> no! What? Oh, that's a timer. Oh. What? I was like, don't break my happiness down. Yeah, and <laughs> there is, yeah, there's, so there's another section that's on the map in the upper left hand corner of the map that is tracking the overall time that you have at the carnival. So there is some limitations that, uh, that you have with the number of things that you can do with the, the ticket punches on your ticket, but the carnival does close back down at sunrise so you're able to participate and be at the carnival throughout the entire night but as soon as the sun starts rising up that's when they close the doors and they will ask all the patrons to leave Hmm. um i kind of want to go to the lost property section because you know i i kind of lost something Okay. So everyone has access to the map, <laughs> right? And you can see where to go. So where uh, you feel free to discuss it as a group. Like where I you would agree, like to go next. syrup girl. Yeah. Lear yeah. up. Lear up. L. Yes, I you think are. after we go to the lost property, we should go to the carousel. Mm-hmm. And ride on the horses. You don't seem too excited. Um, I'm beaming with joy. Uh-huh. Sure you are. <laughs> I'm right. beaming with joy right now. Okay. 
key. Point of inspiration. <laughs> she can't. She can't smile. So she, I love it. She's leading into it. She's playing her character. Dang. How, how do I? How do I do this? Where's my brother? So I look at the map <laughs> and I like. I see that it's to the right, but I start going to the left so i start like you start going in the wrong yeah direction. i start going towards like bubble pop teapot but i think i'm going to lost property oh okay. Lyra, Lyra, this way Lyra, Lyra. it's the other way i start going backwards okay <laughs> no 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 Lyra, the the other way the way you just came from i start exiting the carnival <laughs> no. Lyra, come back into the carnival what Come back to the carnival. So you start seeing the rest of the group move, moving in the right direction. Oh, okay. I start speedily going after them. Okay, you can have a point of inspiration too. Yeah. Do Do I know my brother's name? I would. Yeah. Yeah, I would. I would I'm double checking. I would ask you. It's like, what is your brother's name? I don't know. Georgie. You, well, think about it for, for Georgie. later. Georgie. <laughs> Georgie. Georgie. <laughs> is that a paper boat? George, he always loved paper boats. <laughs> His name's not Georgie. Aww. All right, so you get you get to the lost property wagon. Outside the lost property wagon is a large feline creature with midnight blue fur. It has a pair of tentacles extending from its shoulders and wears fake butterfly wings. Hanging from its collar is a small wooden keg. The creature... Rough houses with two young boys. One boy squeals again, Durla, again, while the other hangs up. Durla. How do you spell that? D I R L A. Oh, so again, Durla, again, while the other hangs onto the creature's neck. Do we know the gender of Durla? Uh, not at this moment. Okay. What did you say Durla's race was again? That. Is Durla? Oh, she cute. She's a cat. Whoa! Mm. I thought it would have been purple. <coughs> purple? I don't know. I just thought green. I just thought Durla was gonna be purple. I thought Durla was gonna be green. I don't know. I was picturing a turquoise. Uh, would anyone like to uh, make a nature check? Sure. Who's good at nature? Um. I have zero for nature, so... I have negative one. <laughs> I should do it. Is anyone good at nature? No. I have a zero. I have a zero, too. Two, and what do you got? I live in nature. So, what, what do you have in nature? I have leaves and sticks. Okay. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to roll a nature check. <laughs> I... I Wait, nights, no, dude. Good job. Can I like look yeah. toot up and down, and do I do I see anything else? Do I? Does anything indicate you are really good with nature? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, that's good. Eighteen. Eighteen. Okay. Oh. Uh, you know that uh, Durla is actually a displacer beast. <gasps> Ooh. Um, but by but normally they are aggressive uh, and dangerous creatures. But this one, uh, you can actually hear like talking to the boys, playing with them, roughhousing with them. Um, so it's obviously a very very friendly uh, displacer beast, um, which is not normal. Huh? Hey, Darla. Hello. <gasps> I love your voice. <laughs> Thank you. It's so. Oh my gosh. Lyra just kind of sits cross leg and just kind of like stares at you. You just sit down on the ground With right awe there. In her <laughs> eyes. Crisscross applesauce yeah. right in front of her. <laughs> Hands in my lap. Just. Hello, little one. What can I do for you? I love and she's like dividing her attention between you and the, and the boys that are around as they're still playing and moving around and taking a look at things. And like one of her. Uh, tentacles that's uh, just sort of like absentmindedly like wraps around one of the boy's legs and gently like pushes it pushes the boy to the floor as or to the ground as they're continuing to roughhouse and play um hi hello I, I lost something the last time I was here you did I did what did you lose um my sense of direction I think Oh, you know, things do go lost here at the carnival from time to time. 
Do they ever show up again? Sometimes. I can tell you, though, that it, it usually happens when folks get into the carnival without a ticket. Mr. <coughs> Mr. Witch and Mr. Light, they have been on edge lately. Sorry, who was it? Mr. Witch and Mr. Light. They're the owners of the carnival. How so? Well, it does seem like they have, they're extra on edge whenever someone is discovered that comes into the carnival without a ticket. There's something else that's going on with that. And that's when these things have the tendency to go missing. But they're not talking about it. They, they just simply escort the people out of the carnival and that's the end of it. Okay, how would it be go about retrieving these things? Just wondering. I would try and investigate Mr. Witch and Mr. Light. I, but confronting them directly about this might not be the best idea. Hmm. Where would we find them? Probably the staff area. Because they, they work here, right? They, they do work here, yes. Okay, okay. Yes, they, their wagon is in the staff area. But only staff members of the carnival are able to get back there. And how could we become a staff member? Yeah, is there any uh, job listings? I need some money. <laughs> no, I need some money. You you wish to join the carnival? Y y yes. I think so. It's such a joyous <laughs> well, okay, time. Hold on, hold on. I would like is this is a permanent thing. Like joining a carnival, is it like for life? No, no, we, we do have employees that they come and go, but most of the people here have been, and once they start working at the carnival, they they stay. As far as I can remember, no one has stopped being a carnival member. Ooh, it might be a permanent thing. People have gone missing, though, in years past. Do you know anyone that has gone missing by any chance? Yes. My my son went missing not that long ago. So I would be very interested in finding out more about that if you could find my lost cub. Of course. Does your son have a name? Yes. My son's name is somewhere <gasps> that's such a pretty name <laughs> <laughs> <Isn't that somewhere? laughs> hold on where are my nuts on this <clears throat> my my son's name is star oh star that's a very pretty name say it like you mean it that's a really pretty <laughs> name <laughs> i <laughs> love it <laughs> smile <laughs> jeez you're so not friendly pinky <laughs> now i know uh it's it's very difficult to get into the area where the staff goes. It's just it's magically sealed off. So unless you're an actual employee of the carnival, you can't get back there. There are also witch light hands that guard the area, preventing people from circumventing the magical uh, barriers and security. Mm. However, I do know that. Mr. Witch and Mr. Light sometimes go to the Hall of Illusions. Ooh, where's that? Whoa. But the rest of the staff do not like going there. There is something off about the Hall of Illusions that we don't like, but I suspect that may play a part in the missing things. Has your son ever went to the Hall of Illusions before? N no, no. no. So I, I, I just know that odd things happen around the Hall of Illusions, and the rest of the staff kind of avoid the place. At the Hall of Illusions, uh, Candlefoot is the name of the Witchlight Hand that is currently running the Hall of Illusions. Hey, who? I'm sorry. Who? His name is Candlefoot. 
candle foot. Does he have candles for feet? No, no, he's just a person. Uh, but you should know that he uh, lost his voice. Oh, he also lost things. This seems to be a oh. common theme around here. All right. Okay. Do we know when the last time we were at when we like snuck into the witch like carnival? If we ever went to the Hall of Illusions? You don't recall. We don't call. Mm-hmm. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, we could ask. We could ask if she remembers us. Maybe. Go if for if it. Dira. Yeah. If, if, I'm sorry, Dur- Durla. Durla. Right? No. Durla. 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 Thank you. Durla. <laughs> it was eight years ago, right? Yes. Yeah. If she remembers to kit a four four people sneaking in. No, I'm sorry, I I, I I don't remember the four of you. But I was around at that time. Do you remember uh four four or five kids sneaking in at the time? I I don't. Okay, thank you. This might be a weird question, but can I feel your fur? <laughs> of so course. Soft. Of course you can. Like, reach out. And, and it's very soft, very silky. My gosh, you're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Oh. You're not so bad yourself, oh. little fairy. Oh. You look like you would fit right in here as a carnival hand. That's very sweet of you. Okay. <laughs> just, it, it's just kind of like... Just, Daria just like finding their idol. We we're we're by lost property, right? Yes. We're at lost property. Can we go in? Over it, here? it is just a wagon. Oh. And it's yeah, it, it's and the wagon is open and there's jackets and clothing and other trinkets and things like that that, that are inside. So it, it's basically just a lost and found. Oh, okay. Okay. Um can we take a look? Sure, so, if you want. I just want to make sure I understand. You don't have my handwriting? I'm, I'm sorry, I, I don't. Okay. All the things that I have here are physical, tangible things. What's your favorite thing to do here at the carnival? My favorite thing? Oh, boy. I'm a big fan of the Pixie Kingdom. Because you get shrunk down very small and you get to explore a little tiny model of the witch-like carnival. <gasps> that sounds, so that sounds preposterous. It and it's fantastic. So you're bas- so it's basically we're we're so we're in the carnival and then well, we actually, shrink down into No, a I'm sorry. Carnival? My favorite thing I don't get to participate in it because I'm too big. But Is it called Pink Sea Kingdom? That was it? Yes. Okay. It is actually the uh, if I was a little bit smaller. I would love to be able to do the snail races. Well, why don't you go into Pixie Kingdom but and I get love, shrunk I down? love watching the snail races. That's a great idea. I could be shrunk down. The problem is the magic that shrinks you down only works inside the Pixie Kingdom. Once oh. you leave, you grow back to regular height. Can you do the snail racing while you're inside the Pixie Kingdom? No, you can't. There, there isn't a smaller model of the snail races inside okay. the Pixie Kingdom. Oh, Pixie Kingdom. It's just a tiny Pixie Kingdom. Like, nothing else tiny. It's just Pixie Kingdom, and you are tiny. C- correct. Okay. Correct. So, where would you like to go to next? So, I've had a th- or, or did you have more, more questions? No. Yeah. Oh, okay, I need to converse with the group. Uh, okay. Do we want to maybe find out more information about uh, Mr. Witch and Mr. Light and possibly the Hall of Illusions before we, like, go anywhere near the Hall of Illusions or staff area? I think that's a really good idea. We have to go quick, though, since it's getting close to the big top extravaganza. (gasps) Oh, wait, wait. Before we leave, I go, what's the big top extravaganza? Oh, the big top that is the big show in the big tent that mr light does host the big top the big top yes where is it oh the big tent <laughs> <laughs> yes the big tent is the, is the big top whoa um do you think we could like backstage meet mr witch was that uh, 
it's it's possible that uh, that you could run into them. They they are going to be there, uh, helping facilitate and and host the show of the Big Top. Hmm. Do you recommend it? Like, do you like it there? Oh, absolutely. The, well, the Big Top is a fantastic show. You would have so much fun if you went there. We should go there, guys. Okay. Do we have time to do anything else before the show starts? Um. Yeah, I I, I would think that you would have. Uh, enough time to go to at least you know one more ride or or events before the big top takes place. Hmm. So we're gonna head to the Hall of Illusions. Or I think we should wait before wait, we go, just because okay. it's like really illusiony. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the bubble bubble pop teapot. Ooh. Sounds kind of fun. That the snail cool. races sound ponderous. Yeah. We should do the snail races. Yes. Wait, where are they? Oh wait, they're far away. Does it's, that matter? The, the distance is, is relative. Okay. So it's Ooh. like you would be able to go uh, anywhere in the carnival and do one more event before the big top happens. Okay. Well, let's do some snail racing then. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Snail racing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you, Miss Derla. Yep. Thank, thank you. Thank you. I w- oh, you're very. I will be thank back. You, I love you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm very fond of you as well. Okay. Bye bye now. Bye. So you, so you make your way through the carnival to the snail racing. The grandstands next to this race course are filled with cheering fairgoers, ringing bells, swinging rattles, and waving flags. On the starting line, eight giant snails are having their shells scrubbed by pixies. Above the circular course, a wooden gantry hangs from the branches of a central tree where two goblins officiate the proceedings. And uh, let me go get the... Uh, I need to go get something. Oh. Wow. So unprepared. Excuses, excuses. <gasps> oh, my gosh, snail. oh, wait. No, those aren't like... Oh, it's just for size reference. <gasps> I want to ride the shark. You got to die under here. The snail. You got to die? Oh. <laughs> oh, wait, you have this prepared. There's actually a snail. <laughs> Only and one. And a shark. <gasps> and a giant thing. And <laughs> a giant thing. <laughs> well, this goes backwards. Yeah. Where's the actual <gasps> the snail? Alright, so the spacing. Alright, so the spacing on uh, those miniatures is not... Not exact, and there's I only have one giant snail for for a miniature, so I had to pick miniatures for the other snails that are part of the race. What are you talking about? They all look the they're all <laughs> snails. So, yeah. So and uh, the the goblins that are orating the race is like, all right, everybody, we're about to get the race started. Who wants to be a racer? I'm like jumping up and down, so like, hey. Oh, I do it. <laughs> Hi. So there are eight giant snails that are at the starting line of the racetrack. And uh, they have numbers one through eight that's painted on, on them. But when you look around, you can see signs. You can see um, a representation of the, the numbers of the snails. And you can see the names that are next to them on, on a, kind of a race chart. <gasps> what are the names? The Number one, starting on the, the lower yeah, corner okay. here. The one that's, I actually have a giant snail miniature. That one is called Shelly Moo. Oh! The next oh, one. I'm going to write the name down. <laughs> you should just have a notebook, Sam. Okay, next. Uh, the next one, number two, is called a uh, Nimble Foot. Oh, that's so cute. Okay. Next. Uh, number three is called High Road. The High Road. Wait, oopsie, I wrote hide. And normally giant, you know, snails aren't very fast creatures, but there's something about these giant snails Roger. that make them look very quick and very fast. Number so and four. to give you an idea, is like here's a here's a picture oh my gosh. representing oh. them with the racers on them. Oh my gosh. So they are giants. They are big snails. I mean I'd hope so to be able Wait, to ride them. Okay. In the movie Epic, which was my like childhood favorite movie, there was like bird racing kind of like that. Mm-hmm. Wait, they had the armor on it? Yeah. 
Ooh. So the, these snails don't have any armor on them, but there is big saddles that are is strapped to the tops of their of their shells that you can perch on top of, mm. and it's got reins that lead down to the the snails' heads where their big antenna are sticking out around it. Uh, number four is called quick leaf. Quick leaf. Number five is flower flash. <laughs> number six is whizzy. <laughs> Number seven is breakneck. Oh. And number eight, who I have as the shark representing, is Queen's Majesty. (gasps) So, which snail would you like to uh, climb on top of and race? So I've narrowed it down to three options. (laughs) (laughs) Shelly Moo, Flower Flash, or Queen's Majesty. So I'm going to wait for whatever people choose. Well... Dude is drawn towards Nimblefoot. Mm. I really like Flower Flash. Okay. Really? Yeah. I want to ride Wizzy. <laughs> okay. I will ride Shelly Moo. Okay. <laughs> oh, Shelly Moo, you gorgeous beast. <laughs> <laughs> I start like pep talking Shelly Moo. You got this. I believe in you. Can I inspire Shelly Moo? All right, we'll, we'll, we'll get to the Sorry. rules here in a second. We'll get to the rules here in a second. Come on, inspire. So, w- Willow, is there a particular snail that you're leaning towards, or do you not want to participate? I, I, did, I said one. Oh, you did? I'm sorry. I said, uh, Wizzy. Wizzy. You like, okay, Wizzy? <laughs> yeah. All right, so, uh, Shelly Moo. Uh, the first one for, for Sam is the one that's represented by the, by the giant snail miniature that's there. Um... I'm sorry, uh, uh, Bertie. You said Wizzy. Yes. Here, I'm just gonna put a. Okay, Wizzy is the sort of a uh, demon, a uh, dragon, uh, fly winged creature that's there. I'm Yay! Arguably the most terrifying of the miniatures that are that are out there. <laughs> Yay! Um, and Sam, I'm sorry. Which one were you gonna do? Um, Flower Flash. Flower Flower Flash. Okay, so Flower Flash. One, two, three, four, five is the Displacer Beast miniature that's there. Ooh. So and, this one right here. And I'm sorry, Trent, you said was Wizzy what you were leaning towards? No, uh, no. Nimblefoot. Or Nimblefoot. Okay, so Nimblefoot. So this can be Sammy's marker. Okay. And this one can be... Oh. <gasps> it's a baby! It's a baby! <laughs> Where'd you find this? <laughs> <laughs> we need to go to the source immediately. <laughs> Get you some miniature dice. <laughs> yeah! Okay, wait, which one is yours? Uh, the Is that a... Like a skeleton horse? A skeleton horse. Yeah, the second one. Nimblefoot? Okay. Nimblefoot, yeah. All right. So the, the, the rules of this race is that the snails move 80 feet per round just on their own. But as the rider, you can inspire them based off of an animal handling check to no. make them go oh. even faster. Um, Can I use my bardic inspiration? Not, not for the mechanics of, of the oh. racing here. Animal. So you animal. could just ride the thing, and it will move eighty feet every single round just on its own because these these racing snails are very very fast. But if you try and you know kick your feet and you're trying to go the snail into going faster, you could potentially make them go go faster. But if you don't make the animal handling check, it's possible you could inadvertently cause them to go slower. That sounds like me. I, I have a zero. I have plus <laughs> one. Negative okay. one. So the goblins <laughs> started to say, okay, we are ready to race. Three, two, one. Woo! And the snails take off racing. So, Trent, let's start with you. you do, do you want to try and go to your snail? Or yeah, is, okay. yeah. I think uh, uh, Tude's approach would just be to lean forward and just be talking to the snail the entire time, telling him how great he's doing and... Uh, <laughs> and how good he looks running. Wait, is each square five feet or ten? Each square is 20 feet. 20 feet, okay. All right, so all of the snails have moved up to their default 80 feet, and depending on the roll that you get, it could move it further forward or it could move it backwards. So let's see what happens. Oh. Need you roll a roll an animal handling check, please. Nimble foot. I picked you because you're nimble, just like me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
nine. Nine. <laughs> okay. Um, that is a failure. <gasps> All right, so you are actually going to be 10 feet slower. <laughs> Shelly Boo! Is that half a square? Yeah, it's half a square. Yeah, so, so the, the, the numbers and the boxes don't exactly work out quite right. Okay. Sammy? I think what I would do is I would just keep screaming, like, flower power! <laughs> flower power! <laughs> Like dead pan, just like yeah. flower, flower power. power. All right, flower power. Go, go, roll an flower animal handling power. check. Okay. This one. Fourteen. Fourteen. That is a success. So <gasps> your snail is actually going to move twenty feet faster Whoa. than than normal. So just move him up one a square. square. Whoa. Just one. There you go. All right, birdie. I don't really know how to deal with snails, so I'm like, uh, go, go, Izzy, uh, go, boy, like, just, I, like, very questioning, like, what do I do here? <laughs> All right. Like, I'm not going to say I'm the most positive going, yeah, let's go! Okay, now I have to roll? Yep. <sighs> one. One, okay. Wait, was it natural? It's a negative one. <laughs> uh, oh, no, it's not natural. Chilled at two. But then minus one. All right, so yours actually goes uh, twenty feet slower. Um, so move her back a full full box. Not you did two there again. <laughs> Just one. There we go. <laughs> she the really has a terrible rolling. sense of direction. <laughs> <laughs> hey! And, and magnitude. All right, Sam. Have Lyra do an animal handling check. Uh, she is going to sing a song. Be like. Shall I move? Will you be my boo? I love you from the moon in back as I'm riding your back. Thank you. How the heck? Did you, were you thinking about this the whole time? No. Whoa. Good job, Sam. That was a natural twelve. Does it doesn't count? Does it? <laughs> no. It was out of the box. <laughs> you gotta re-roll that. But it was perfect. <laughs> Eight. Eight? Okay. It's a failure. Yeah, that is a failure, but you move back ten feet, so half a square. Dang, Sammy's doing good. It was gonna be a natural 20. All right. The now, there's surprises dice. that happen in this <gasps> race. <laughs> hey, that doesn't count, Dad. It fell out of your box. Um, One random snail gets a stitch, reducing its speed by 40 feet this round. It's it's gonna be me. It's gonna be me. I'm doing so good. You need a D8? What? Wait, did we all roll a D8? Bro, bro. All right. Bless you. uh, All the snails continue charging forward. Um, And it's gonna be random. So actually, uh. Birdie, can you roll, roll a D8? You'll Gosh, determine which it. one of the snails is going to get the stitch. Why that will cause I them to, to move back to 40 feet. Wait, is this a... Wait, yes, there. I do have a D8. Okay. Seven. All right, so that's not going to be any of yours. So number seven <gasps> is breakneck, which no one chose. Sorry, breakneck. Did you break your neck? All right. So real quick, let's do the animal handling checks again. Oh no! So essentially, the so to to speed things up, the DC is twelve. So if you get above a twelve, it's a success. If you get below a twelve, it's a failure. But if you make it or miss it by five or more, there's extra consequences that happen with that. So let's have everyone roll it at the same time, and then uh, yeah, oh. we'll deal with the consequences. <laughs> Natural one. Do you, do you see that? Natural yeah. one? Yeah. Okay. Well, if I add stuff to this, so, but that doesn't count for a natural one, I, does it? All right. Move your snail back Split. two squares. Ah! Okay. Go ahead and roll yours. Okay. One. Get bird. Four. Four. Okay. Move, your, move yours back two squares. Putting this dice in a dice jail. Mm. Sammy, what did you get? I got a 12. You got a 12? That If it meets it, it beats it. Damn. So you get to move yours up uh, half a square. Half a square? Yeah. So I just think I can just place your views, right? And 
Trent, what did you have? I had a natural 20 Ooh. for a total of 23. Oh my wow. God. Okay. Uh, and then you get to move yours up a full square. What? Are you so jelly, Sam? <laughs> I rolled a natural one. Hey. So right now it looks like that Pinky is in the lead on her snail. All right. Now... What kind of surprises? Oh, it's another random snail gets a stitch. Sammy, can you roll a d8 and tell us uh, that that'll determine which snail is going to lose 40 feet this round? Oh no. It's gonna be mine. (sighs) Don't get six. Four. Four. Oh, none of us. Oh, okay. (laughs) It's still beating me. So number four was Quickleaf, which no one from the group had chosen. So all the all the other giant giant, giant snails are being ridden by other uh, spectators of the carnival. Mm-hmm. They're doing way better than us. Uh oh! What? No! Sh- Jaws, don't. <coughs> Oops. All right. So it looks like Pinky is still in the lead, and then Lord. second is Tood, uh, and. Lyrup, I think, yeah, it looks like you're last right now on your snail. <laughs> Whatever, I'm bonding with Shelly Moo. I right. love like Shelly. It actually looks like I'm last. Oh, yeah, actually, yeah, you're right. Will- Willow, okay, so Willow and Lyrup are <laughs> are the last two Whoa! in place with this race. And so everyone is just tearing around the track right now. Dust is getting kicked up behind uh, the uh, behind the snails as they're they're going around, and they're going into the the final turn of the bend and coming back around, making your way back towards the stand. So you're about like halfway through the race at this point. So I need everyone to roll another animal handling check. Oh, okay, no. I chose a die. That and, and again, you don't have to do this because your snail automatically moves every round the 80 feet you don't roll you the, the normal speed 18 18 okay so that is a pass Woo-hoo! okay so, but, and that's by five so you actually get to move up a full square so i get to go right there 10 whoa oh no <laughs> i even chose my snail die pinky what did you have i got a seven okay that's a failure that is, yeah <laughs> I'm sorry, I took your luck. I got a uh, 12. Oh, 12, right. On the dot. 12 is a success, and so it looks like Tood has taken the lead now. Nimblefoot, you're doing so good. <laughs> you are prolific. <laughs> yeah, go Wizzy! Yay! Flower power, flower power. Shelly Moo, it's okay. I'll always love you. No matter what you do. You're my boo, baby. My boo. <laughs> I love you. Okay, so uh, another surprise happens. Whoa! The crowd really gets into the race at this point. And they're cheering and bolstering, and one random snail gets to move an extra 20 feet this round. Trent, can you roll a d8 for us? And that will determine get which a snail six. gets an extra get 20 feet. Get a six. 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 <laughs> Four. Four. Oh, dang, it's the other one. Ugh, I don't like that one. Ew. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to beat me. <laughs> All right. So none of the snails that you are riding was bolstered by this. Ugh. Another animal handling check, please. So at this point, Lyrup's kind of like, I'm not going to win this. <laughs> so <laughs> you, you still could. She Sixteen. stands up on Shelly Moo and st- pulls oh. out her lyre and starts just <laughs> playing a tune for the crowd and just like trying to hype up everybody more. Okay. So, but not the snail. You're just hyping the crowd up. Well, and this and Shelly Moo. Okay. It's for Shelly Moo. Okay. It's always for Shelly Moo. Okay. All right. So, uh, Tood, what did you get? 17. 17, nice. That's, uh, okay, so not by five, but that's still an improvement. Or a success, I should say. That's by five. 12 plus five. Oh, yes, you're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, can't, I can't math today. I have the dumb. <laughs> Same Z's. Pinky. I got a two. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> made it! <laughs> I was doing so good. 
Wait, did you move me up there? Not yet. What, what did you get for your... I got a 16. You got a 16? That is a success. And you are this guy, right? Yes. Yeah. The one with the cool dice. Right, so you move ahead. The extra 10 feet there. A whopping three. Whopping three, okay. <laughs> yeah, move back a full square. Uh-huh. <laughs> Shelly Moo is... Oh, you're dead last right now. <laughs> no, but Shelly Moo's just like so in love with my energy and everything that she doesn't even care. She's like, I love you. And I'm like, I know, I know. But I don't love you. Hashtag heartbreaker. What? I would oh, oh, what am I doing? What? Dang, Sam is still beating me. I think we all know who's going to win. Sam. It's obviously Lear Up. Lear Up and Shelly So Moo. coming around Shelly the Moo. very last corner of the race, you're almost back in front of the grandstands again. And uh, Tude on Nimblefoot is so close to crossing the finish line. It looks like this is the last chance that anyone has of overtaking him at this point. So let's do one more random surprise for the race. This is going to be an eight. The saddle on one random snail comes loose and falls <gasps> off. Oh, have no. it before. Sam, have it before. Can you roll a D8? Let's determine who whose saddle comes off. Yeah. Six. Four. Oh, it's four. It's okay, so is that okay? So not any of the players. No. Okay. No. It's always four though. Yeah. yeah it's, it's wait. It's what weird. was four's name? Four was quick. Ah, oh, quick leave you, poor poor soul. <sighs> All right. So the the spectator that is on that snail number four, which is uh, quick leaf. Uh, yeah, their saddle pops off. The leather straps suddenly break. And they go flying off oh. the back of the snail and, and hit Whee! the ground rather hard. But they get up and they're just like holding their head a little bit and wave to the crowd. And everyone's like, yay, he's okay. Mm-hmm. But his snail keeps charging forward <laughs> down the racetrack. I need one more animal handling check from, from everybody. Oh, no. Okay. Tude is going <laughs> to elect not to that goad I, his that, snail. That is actually the smartest thing to do right now. You got this, nimble foot. <laughs> Five. <laughs> <laughs> Zero. Oh my god. Oh. So you go to one and then you're like one. Oh. <laughs> Sammy, what did you get? Seven. Seven? Oh. That's still backwards. Dang, that's, nimble that's by five. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oopsies. Okay, it's it's not even it's not even close. Tude comes charging around the bend right in front of the grandstands and is the first snail across the finish line. <laughs> Lights and confetti starts going off. It's not even close. Tude on, on Nimblefoot is the clear winner the by, by the by a mile compared to compared to all the others. Ouch! <laughs> can can Tude do a little like uh, he slides off? Uh, Nimblefoot shell and does like a, a little bit of a flourish flip, and then before he lands on the ground, yeah, sure. Uh, do an you, acrobatic. Yeah, yeah. Do, yeah, do an okay. acrobatic check. Good say, fail, fail, fail. Want you? Uh, dirty twenty. Dirty twenty. Dang. Okay, yeah, do it, no problem. <laughs> he 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 launches off the shell, tucks into his shell, so it's just a spinning turtle shell, and then he pops out of it right before he hits the ground. Oh yeah. So one of the goblins climbs out of uh, of the stands, comes down to you, and they give you a blue potion. <gasps> drink Say, it. This drink is your it. prize for being the winner of the sale races today. And this is actually a, it's got a, a, a rough label on it, but it clearly says potion of advantage. When you drink this potion, you gain advantage on one ability check, attack roll, or saving throw of your choice that you make within the next hour. Dang! So essentially, it's like it's a point of inspiration Chug that you can it. choose when to, when to use. Now, do I have to use it immediately before I do the the roll, or no? It lasts for an hour, so oh, okay. so you could you could plan ahead. Oh, okay. So when, from when I drink it, it lasts for an hour. Correct. Okay. Yes. You also, <coughs> along with everyone else. Uh, everyone is given a magic wand. So it's sort of like the, it's sort of the consolation prize that everybody gets just for participating. Um, 
And the goblin hands this out to, to each of you. He says, uh, this is a uh, Dancing Lights uh, magic wand. It allows you to cast the spell Dancing Lights once. And then after that, it's just a cool, neat magic wand. Well, it wouldn't be magical anymore. It's just a wand then. It's a stick. Okay. Cast Dancing Lights once, then you have an awesome stick. Yeah! yeah! <laughs> I'm still oh, on yes. Shelly Moo, just like Prodigious. complimenting Shelly Moo, hugging Shelly Moo, like refusing to leave Shelly Moo. Shelly Moo, Shelly it's Moo. me and you forever, boo. You're my rock. And I don't know, I can't rhyme. Big top See. extravaganza. See you later. It goes up. Flower flash. Happy meter went up. Why'd it go Yay. up? Cause we're happy. Are you happy? You're not did, smiling. Did the happy meter start at um, the bottom? I'm so it started, started in the middle. Right there. Oh, okay. Oh, so we're, okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm looking at it upside down. So. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Awesome. So you can start hearing uh, announcements throughout the carnival, uh, <laughs> talking about how. The big top show is about to begin. Everyone, if you would like to catch the show, please make your way towards the big top. Yeah. I went for you, Shalemu. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Lyra kind of skippingly goes to the big top. Wait, but she kind of goes behind Tood, and she's going to try to take the potion. <laughs> It's in his shell. Oh. You gonna root around in his shell? Whoa. Um, personal space, bruh. Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> that would be, um, a little, uh, private for you. And, Rude. um, personal boundaries, am I right? Okay. Yeah. Anyway, you could have skips off. Uh, but the big top. <laughs> but you don't know where the big top is. You have a map. She a map. no no. Oh, she true. starts going. <laughs> she starts oh. heading to like mystery mine. Like let's oh. go. Stroop no. girl. The big top is Lira, this way. It's the other way. What what's another way? The, that fo way. Fo that follow way. us. Yeah, just follow us. Okay. <laughs> don't ever lose track of us. What? Don't lose track of us. Okay. And just like is kind of skip dancing with around the group, following them. So as you approach the big top, it is by far the biggest structure inside the Witchlight Carnival, and you enter in through the big parted uh, doorway uh, for the tent. The roof of this tent reaches toward the night sky in three swooping peaks, topped with spinning gold stars. Painted wooden panels on the tent. On the tent walls, whirl with colorful motion. So very, very similar to the ticket booth, that there's painted designs oh. on the inside of the tent, but they're magically moving and swooping. I know you haven't done any activities yet that require oh. a ticket punch. Oh, for the oh, I would think. Yeah, the, the big top is free for anyone. But what about the snail racing? The snail racing was free too. It's like you really? Didn't, yeah, you didn't have to have Wait, a ticket punch. Wait, because these are only for like the rides, like the carousel and like places like that. Okay. You would assume okay. so, but you you just haven't gone to any of those yeah. yet. Hmm, okay. Uh, painted wooden panels on the tent walls whirl with colorful motion, displaying vibrant circus performances. The sound of music and laughter drifts out through the canvas door. There's goblins and other uh, witch, uh, uh, witch light hands um, motioning people to come in, fill the stands that, that are in the tent around the, the center where the act is about to begin. Now, there are eight different acts that could show up here in the middle. So, but we're going to randomly roll to see which one it's going to be. Who, yeah, who yeah. hasn't done an event or... Uh, I think we all did for have, the snail race. Okay. Yeah, we all did. Yeah. Trent, let's start with you then. Okay. Roll a d8 for me. D8. Five. Five. <laughs> oh, no. So, uh, no. you hear the squealing of wheels. Oh, my. That gradually gets louder. <laughs> And the, uh, the tent on the back end gets parted as a giant purple and pink and green cannon is rolled into the center of the tent. I knew it. And, so, and then magically, poof, there's about 
20 clowns that suddenly appear in the middle of the tent around this cannon. Ah! And then they... <laughs> oh, what are they? <laughs> and they, they quickly set up a net at the other side of the tent as they forcibly jam some unwilling clowns into the top of this cannon. Unwilling? Well, they, they're acting like they're unwilling. It's like all the all the clowns are just like... Mm, Lyric is frozen in up, fright. And the other clowns pick them up and then force them headfirst into the top of the cannon. Lyric, they're just this actors. This madness. And then there's Lyric a clown that comes fine. charging out with a torch in his hand from the back of the tent and he starts running towards the back of the cannon and he leaps forward and lights a fuse. Boom! As a clown is launched feet first from the cannon across the tent and lands in the net. And so there's more uh, more antics like this that happens, but it's constantly just the clowns firing each other back and forth across the tent from this cannon. Oh, projectile! <laughs> All right, so there are some there other details. A scared that come check. I, it's okay, Lyra. Scared, scared check. How scared? Lyra. Would Lyra be scared by the just the explosions and all that happening? She doesn't like clowns. She, oh, it's the clowns that she'd be afraid of, of course. Lyra, they're not real. <laughs> Their hair competes too much with her syrup hair. I, I I would think that's kind of like your choice. Would do you want this to be like a thing that Lyra is always afraid of? Yeah, is clowns. Okay, well then, uh, or roll... Or she's just not used to it. Uh, roll a... What's a fear check? It's not a saving throw. Could be wisdom? I think it would just be wisdom, yeah. So do, do a wis- uh, yeah, do a wisdom check. <coughs> Nine. Nine, okay, Nine. yeah. You are absolutely frightened. As soon as the clowns appear, and they start firing each other out of the cannon, you don't like this. You want to leave immediately. I just like crouch down and just kind of like rock back and forth. Okay. Yeah, think think of uh, favorite things. Yeah, think, think of, of the pancake. pancakes. Pancakes, yeah. Pancakes. I like pancakes. pancakes. Think about your beautiful hair. I have great hair, don't I? Yes, you do. You be- you beautiful, beautiful hair. Right, too? Yeah. Yeah, beautiful hair. Yeah? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, beautiful. good job, good job. Yeah. Really pretty hair. So pretty. Very polychromatic. Do you know what that means, dude? Yes. <laughs> Are sure? you sure so, you know what it means? <laughs> so at the at the end of the show. At the at the end of the Clowns being fired back and forth with the cannon. They they pack everything up and they roll it back out of the tent. They close the tent flaps, and that's when poof, there's another puff of smoke, and a very flamboyant looking elf appears in the middle of the tent. He's like, "Hello, everyone. I am Mr. Lights, and I hope all of you are just having." The most fabulous time at the Witchlight Carnival. I hope you enjoyed the show. I certainly did. There's still many more things to do around the carnival, but don't forget to come back here right before sunrise, and we will crown the Witchlight Monarch. <gasps> Some lucky individual in the crowd or in the carnival today, whoever had the most fun, will be crowned our Witchlight Monarch. I think it should be Durla. Yeah, Durla. Durla. <laughs> I like his outfit. And uh, can, can all four of you roll a perception check for me? You know, I'm going to get rid of this die that's rolled less than a 10 this whole game. Four. Four. Okay. <laughs> perception. 12. Okay. 10. 10. All right. We're okay. so good at rolling. Oh, wrong one. You need the d20 where to go. Did you drop that on the floor? Oh no, here it is. Oh, there it is. It's in your stash. I stole it. <laughs> I got a <gasps> 20. Oh, natural, natural 20? Natural 20. Nice. Okay. So, Pinky, you are you the only anything? one that sees what? this. Do you add anything? No, natural, I think. Wait, maybe. It's all natural. Yeah, plus two. Oh, plus two, so 22. 22. 22. All right, so out of the group, you're the only one that sees this. You see Mr. Witch. 
Oh. A very similar looking elf. Ew. Standing off to the side near the front entrance, but he's kind of off in the shadows. He's watching Mr. Light in the in the center of the tent, and he's looking around at the crowd, but he seems to be distracted by this pocket watch that he has in his hand. And it's open, he's looking at it, and there's what appears to be some magical light that shines and illuminates his sort of dour looking face. And he's, then he snaps it shut, and you've de- because you got a 22, you get the impression that this pocket wash that he has is an extremely valuable item to okay. him personally. And he tucks it very gently and very deliberately back into his, his vest pocket, and then he walks away sort of under the stands, going around, sort of like he's doing kind of a perimeter check That's around mis- around the tent. Yeah, okay. Yep, the, Mr. Witch, yeah, Mr. Witch. Light is the, he's the flamboyant yeah. elf that's <laughs> in the tent right Mr. now, and he Witch. did the announcement for who's going to be uh, crowned the Witchlight Monarch. I wonder who it's going to be. I hope it's Sterla. So people start filing out of, of the big tent at this point. Mm-hmm. Ah! <laughs> another another hour has gone by, so you're about you know, three hours roughly uh, away from Crowning. sunlight or oh, which light? sunrise, and the carnival will be coming to an end. So, where we're going to end today's adventure is where would you? What's the next thing that you would like to do that we will pick up next time? Mm. Should we go to the uh, Hall of Illusion? No, we should wait. Maybe that should be our last activity. Yeah. That um, should maybe. I, I too would want to do a ride, so probably the dragonfly or the mystery mine. Um, do you want to do bubble pop teapot? Or the bubble pop teapot. <laughs> I think we should go there. Bubble pot yeah. teapot. That's my vote at least. Okay. And Durla also recommended the Pixie Kingdom, so maybe mm. we do both of those right there. What? Okay, but what? I'm wondering why are we still together as a group? Yeah. Why are we? Together I, I know as Pinky. A group? Yeah. But why are well, because we remember each other. We all yeah. lost. No, something. we don't. Common do we remember goals. Each other? Do we, remember we have a common you, goal. You, you do oh, remember yeah. each other. Oh, oh okay. Yes. Never mind. I thought we didn't. I thought you were like strangers. We have a common goal, so we're working towards the same. Do we know each other's common goal? Yeah. Or did you ever talk about it? No. I mean, I told Darla I lost my sense of direction. Yeah, so. but you didn't tell yeah, you're, you're, What you lost is actually pretty obvious. <laughs> <laughs> You've proven that numerous times so far. I didn't think I told anyone that I can't smile. Because Birdie keeps telling me to smile. No, and I keep being like, why are you so grumpy? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and Toot asked for his handwriting back yeah. at the Lost and Found. Mm. So, you know, Toot. So, and I think maybe that this is the point that it would occur to you as, like, this is going through uh, Willow's head. Like, wh- why are we... What are we doing? It's like why? Why are we together about this? And friendship. I, <laughs> and I think, like, collectively, it kind of all dawns on you at the same time is that there there was a fifth person that was part of your group eight years ago, which is Willow's brother mm-hmm. that is is missing. So well, I don't. Know I how, know that the whole time. You knew that the whole time, but for the, like the the light bulb goes off for the rest of you as well. Huh. It's like you're, there was someone that was part of your group last time that's no longer here. Wait, wasn't the memories there a are fuzzy. Boy? Yeah, there was a boy that was not Tood. <laughs> yes, there, there was another boy besides Tood. Well, Tood's a man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. He so, is. so having that that new thought occur to all of you, so that, <laughs> so there is a common goal that you all have is finding these lost things, and in Willow's case, the the lost person from your group. So, I don't know if that would add extra motivation to to your characters, but yeah, there is a common goal that you all have. Mm-hmm. Um, and 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 would that and because that's just now dawning on everyone would that change or influence what you would do next uh you know i'm kind of hungry there's the feasting or- orchard 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 yes. yeah so it's kind of the you know, the, the festival food area of i'm the hungry mm-hmm. i mean i guess i can eat 
And it's right by the Dragonfly Ride. I love how you named all of these different places that you go to, and then all of a sudden, I'm hungry. <laughs> and that is now overriding the next decision. I mean, I still kind of want to go to the Bubble Pop Teapot, not going to lie. Well, if, yeah. dude, if you want to ride a ride, there's the Dragonfly Ride. It's, it's right, right there. It's right next to us. That sounds perfect. That sounds so is it... I know that On the word. map is the dragonfly rides on the way to the orchard? Mm-hmm. Sure, okay. yeah. So and then, we, yeah. So should we say next time we'll pick up with you doing that ride and then you'll get some food yeah. at the yeah. orchard afterwards? Uh-huh, yeah. Okay. I'm starving for some pancakes. Because <laughs> it's also a dumb idea, though, to eat right before we go on a ride. That's true. You have no idea like how thrilling the dragonfly exactly. rides are going. We should so do that. <laughs> we should eat some barf on the way. <laughs> <laughs> Character, you know, it, I like. You want you want to go on the ride with a full stomach of pancakes? Yeah, <laughs> I do. Okay. Okay, so orchard first next time. Mm-hmm. Um, sure. <laughs> yes, we're going to eat and then ride. Okay. Yes. Dungeons and Dragons and Daughters is a proud member of the Block Party Podcast Network. Check out other shows such as GM Showcase, Story Arc, We're So Bad at Adventuring, and more. <laughs>